Now, uh, for this project, I started with initial blue screen footage that I got from the animator. That's this footage right here. And I'm gonna open the virtual dub to show you. And uh, virtual dub is freeware, it don't cost anything. And you can get virtual dub from www.virtualdub.org. And uh, I resized this place so that uh, we'll be able to see the full image. Uh, now, uh, this is not completely raw footage because I already worked on it a bit uh, in advance to stabilize it. Uh, I'll spool forward so that you can see. Um, there you can see that the inner frame is jumping around a bit. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, I had to stabilize the image uh, so the image stays in the same place. Because uh, the camera that the animator used was shaking every time she put the release button so the camera was changing position so the picture was jumping around and for that reason I had to stabilize the image first but let me tell you uh, actually there is a way to make sure that the camera uh, don't move around and the way around that is to use a special cable that's called a shutter cable now I'll show you uh, a cable like this that uh, you mount on the shutter release button on the camera uh, so that you don't accidentally shake the camera because you press on the button on the cable uh, instead of pressing directly on the camera. Um, now some cameras they have a built-in uh, mount to attach a shutter cable, but that's probably only expensive cameras that have that, and uh, maybe uh, they only fit the manufacturer's own cable uh, that made that particular camera. But uh, you can get a generic clamp that fits uh, on any camera. I'll show you one here. It is and uh, furthermore it's not even very expensive so that's a good thing too so that is a tip to anyone who makes stop motion animation of any kind uh, that if you use a shutter cable uh, then you can avoid that the camera moves when you press the release button uh, so that that way you can make animations that's completely stable and where the image stays rock steady in the same place all the time but in this case uh, the animator hadn't used a shutter cable so the raw footage was a bit shaky and jumping around, so I had to stabilize it first. And to stabilize it, I used this plugin filter, it's called Motion. Uh, that can be downloaded for free. Um, and let me show you the Motion filter. Uh, with the Motion filter you can uh, change the size and position and rotation angle uh, and stuff. Uh, and you can change it uh, over time, over multiple frames, so that you can make zooms and pans and tilt uh, movements like that. That's why it's called motion. Uh, let me show you how it works. Uh, first I set the output image size to 1600 by 1200. That's the same as the initial size. I'm not going to change the image size this time. And let's open the preview window to see what it's going to look like. Yeah. And uh, now let me show you here, I can set the zoom to, let's say, 200% for example, and see what that looks like. Or I can go the other way and set it to 150%. Oops, now we've got a blackboard on the part where it's outside of the image. Let me do something about that first. That gives me a reason also to show you another filter. It's called Resize, it's a built-in filter. Uh, and the resize filter it has an option down here it's called letterbox crop uh, and that means it don't uh, change the zoom of the image it only changes the size of the image frame and let's set that to 3000 by 3000 uh, and make sure the color uh, that it used to fill around the image is blue and I move that filter up before the motion filter so that the image frame is already expanded when the motion filter is applied. Now let's get back to the motion filter again. And let's open the preview window again. Yeah. And set it back to 50% zoom. There you can see now it has a blue edge around it. And if we try to spool forward, you can see how it moves towards the if we set the ending let's set this to frame 17 because those were the frames that were relatively stable and I can see so it uh, is at the starting frame and the ending frame and 
Let's set the ending zoom to 150%. Yeah, that's a demonstration of how we can use this filter to zoom in and out and uh, you can change the horizontal and vertical uh, position of the image let's say to around and, and do so gradually. And you can change the rotation. So that's what you do with this filter, that's the motion filter, where you can uh, change the zooms and rotation angle and positioning and of the image and, uh, and you can change them gradually over a number of frames that you define. Right. And you can see how when we close the motion filter, uh, you can see how the changes are applied to the video. Alright, that was virtual dub and, and we're gonna use that again later, so just wanted to show you how that works.